Here we are off on another diving and camping adventure to our local islands and reefs. Our first dive was on Middle Reef, at a site further west than the other places we dived recently. Notice how few fish are visible in these reef scenes. This is generally typical of inshore reefs where the water is usually rather dirty. Inshore reefs often have lots of seaweed or algae growing amongst and over the corals, but on this dive we only found seaweed on one small patch of reef near the boat. Another feature of inshore reefs is that most of the corals are shades of brown. This is so the corals symbiotic zooxanthellae can get the most light absorption possible in the dirty water.
reefs like this with a high cover of living corals, competition for space between neighbours can be intense. In rare cases, corals reach a static standoff, but in most, one coral colony grows over its neighbour, smothering the parts it overgrows. Some corals wage active war, killing the nearest parts of their neighbours with stinging tentacles and growing into the space provided. The creek on Gloucester Island has fallen from the recent storms, so this is wonderful. Rinsing the salt off up the creek. Beautiful freshwater creek. Perfect temperature.
well, pity we didn't have more of a day, but it was pretty lovely anyway. Well, good morning. Here we are on Saddleback Island, and I'm doing what I just love doing best, and that's wandering around in nature at dawn with a camera. Not with the intention of getting any serious pictures, but just because I'm enjoying the changing light on the scene around me. You can see that behind me here, we've got a beach gardenia in full flower. It's a pity you can't see the smell. It's just wafting over me, the beautiful dawn smell of the beach gardenias. These are what we call moon flowers, these beach gardenias, because they flower at night and the flowers fall off first thing in the morning. Here's another scene where you need to be able to smell it. The pandanus seeds are ripe bright orange ripe seeds here and they smell amazing and they're falling off while I was uh, looking at the beach gardenia there was a crash behind me and lots of the seeds fell off a big lump down here again you can smell just an amazing sweet smell wafting off these seeds they're sort of edible All the crinum lilies here are flowering really beautifully. Good morning. What about all the crinum lilies? Yeah. Lots of green tree ants all over. <laughs> Where did you go? <laughs> I was looking at the lilies. Sun's coming up over George's Point. Looks like he went right in there. Up the green tree hat. Yeah. What does it smell like, Avril? Oh, just delightful. This beach gardenia.
half an apple. This is a little funny half, happy half. <laughs> Nutty. <laughs> What's for breakfast, Avril? Whatever's in the ever cool. Camut <laughs> bread with nut butter and avocado. Sounds good to me. Yep, and a cup of chamomile tea. Folded on the lawn chair in all the colours. Our second dive was on the tip of Rattray Island. The water looked quite nice from the surface, but as we went deeper and deeper, it got dirtier and dirtier until at 20 metres I could only see an eerie few metres in front of me. The current picked up during the dive, swirling the Gorgonians and soft corals around, and up in the shallows it had even lifted the front edge of one of the huge anemones, exposing the beautiful purple underside. Next we moved to the west facing bay on Rattray Island where the coral had been annihilated by Cyclone Debbie and just did a dive to check out whether the coral was recovering.
recovery was patchy, but there were many places where small corals were starting to grow again on the denuded reef. I've got here my new old Olympus camera that's been modified to take infrared shots. So it uh, doesn't react to normal light but it reacts to infrared which is sort of like heat radiation and it gives some interesting images so I'm going to try it out here while we have a bit of a wander around up the creek. Cure for the air conditioning. 